What's up, everybody? It's Kevin Franzen, Washington Nationals broadcaster, Bay Area. I mean, for life, no matter what, go Niners. And you're listening to Jim on Base. Welcome to another episode of the Jim on Base show. We're here at beautiful PNC Park in Pittsburgh, and we ran into uh, forever giant Kevin Franzen. <laughs> What's going on, boys? Yeah, it was good to see you guys in the hallway. I was like, wait. I was kind of trippy for a minute. I was like... Oh wait, San Francisco in in Pittsburgh. I forgot because that's what that's what we just claimed yesterday, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we came out for the Niner game, and uh, now we're here uh, for the Pirates Nationals game. So I was curious. Uh, I know you've done some time since playing on KNBR, the local radio station, and then you did some games for Philly, and now uh, you're with the Nationals. How how that all happen? Was that on your radar towards the end of your career? Or? I mean, look, I love the game. You want to stay around it as long as you can. You don't want to get away from it. I wouldn't say that KMBR was like the number one thing I wanted to do. It was just like it just happened to be there and, you know, I took a chance on it. I always wanted to call games after. I wanted to be able to talk, you know, Crew and Kuiper always going to be, you know, the, the gold standard to everything. But um, yeah, it was just a way to stay in it. And I've taught, you know, talking to the Phillies people a long time ago about it. Uh, they came with an opportunity when Larry Anderson had, had, was going to take some time off. And so had to try to work that you know I was doing both I was doing KMBR and I was doing you know flying out for Phillies games to do those it was amazing right because it's this it's the sport you love is you have passion about you want to talk about it um the sports talk radio thing wasn't just my my thing because I didn't I didn't like talking about people like they're I didn't like crushing ideas I didn't like crushing plays because you know you go around the NFL and and you think about how many people lose like marriages right are away from their kids so often because they're working on the, the game plan. You know what I'm saying? And, and doing so much work. Why do I want to crush that? I feel like that's the only way you could do a good sports talk radio is if you could have those you know blasting opinions on it. Um, and so being able to talk about baseball and and the game, the actual game, there's no there's nothing fake about it. You know, you're not trying to bring a hot take to anything. It's just it's calling it how you see it. And uh, yeah, it's been all she wrote on that one. Well, it's good to see you out here and glad that you're uh, still in the game. And I think it's interesting, too, to interview you now because I was actually at your debut and you went three for four. And I remember that. So um, did you keep anything from those games or from your career? Do you kind of have a little man cave going or? Uh, I got a bunch of stuff. My parents got my the first hit, um, first home run ball, the, the scorecards from that. I got a bunch of you know uniforms I got signed and stuff. But that night... Uh, the, the further I've gotten away from it, the more I remember, which is weird. Um, I've never watched it back. I've watched a couple. Of, I've seen the highlights of some hits, but I've never watched that game back, ever. It was one of the coolest things anyone can experience in their lifetime, I feel like. because And not like just a feat. It's just a personal experience because of being, you know, a San Francisco Giant fan your whole life. Going, you know, to Candlestick, then the, to... You know, Pac Bell to AT and T to you know, or SBC. You know, all you get the phone booth, and you you go in your first game and you get three knocks, and no one's ever gonna. You're not gonna think that going into the game like, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, what was it? The last time I, that it happened before was Ramon Martinez, I think it was, and it was like us and uh, Willie McCovey. They have three hits in our our debuts, so it just, I, <laughs> it's hard to describe because it like still gets me emotional because. You wanted it so bad. Like, you wanted to play for the Giants so bad. You wanted to have that opportunity so bad. I got it, and it just, uh, you know, it's a a lasting memory. And it went to plan. You know, like you said, you went three for four. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't know. Man, I think the last last knock I got, I was like, this is, this is, this is unbelievable. I, like, I felt like right when I hit that, like, it was like a little blooper over, I think, in the center field off of Jason Grimsley, and... Uh, as I'm running first, I just knew I'm like, well, I'm not going to sleep tonight, you know, because it was one of those already where you're on a high. I just remember coming in the next day and just, it was the first time, like, I didn't really want to play because I was like, it was one of those, like, you, you're still in that euphoric stage and you just know things aren't going to be right today. Yeah. And you have to face Brandon Webb. And that was like in the middle of his Cy Young Awards. And I was like, oh, that's great. So uh, three straight ground balls, a third base, popped up a, uh, one that, I thought was foul, landed fair, and ended up being a double play while I was standing at home. And then, uh, what was it? Randy robbed a homer. Moises Alou hit a walk-off homer, and and that was it. Well, speaking of um, Alou, yeah, 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 a little fumble there. But you got to play for some great managers too: oh. Felipe Alou, Bruce Bochy, Charlie Manuel, and being Soch. a yeah, Mike Sosha. I had four thousand win managers. 
Wow. Well, and the other thing is being a Bay Area guy, mm -hmm. then you got to play for Matt Williams, right? That's got to be surreal too. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, Matty was just different. He was different than all of them. Um, when you grew up loving number nine and, and it was a part of your strikeout batting stances, you know, when you're playing against your buddies, like everyone wanted to, you know, bite on the shoulder. And um, yeah, being able to play for, for him and, you know, every time that we'd win a game, not a lot of people know, but, you know, you have a, a, a giant handshake and we would do it. Every, every win. And uh, Krug saw it one time and he's like, you do it, you do it after everyone. I was like, yes, we do. Everyone. So it was pretty cool. Well, speaking about you too, like now you're a little bit older, you're a dad, right? So you're doing the full on dad life now or? Yeah, I got an eight year old, uh, Tenley. She's amazing. She was born in San Jose. And then my son, he was born in 2020, Dalen. He's, uh, his name's DJ after, uh, after my brother. So um, he's two, he's gonna be three in a month, less than a month, damn. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's amazing. It sucks being away from him as much as I am. But my daughter, I have the greatest time bringing her to the yard. She loves it. My, my son loves coming. He can't just come with me and hang out and do this stuff. My daughter will just be there and uh, she'll just sit there and man, I get, I have so much pleasure just watching her just be all smiles uh, and, and everything. So um, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I don't think you think about what it's going to be like to be a, a parent. And when you are, it's like, wow, this is, this is cool. So yeah. Well, she is only eight, but is she a Swifty yet or? No. No, she's not. She likes Shawn Mendes. Okay. She likes pretty much anything Mario Brothers right now. You know, so all that music, all that's whatever. It was Trolls forever. Um, I know Trolls coming out again, so we're gonna have an, another new soundtrack going. Um, yeah, no, no, no Taylor Swift. She kind of like just, yeah, whatever. So, sorry Taylor, you have a lot of fans. You're good. Well, who are you into? I always like to know who were guys' first concert and what kind of music are you into. Uh, I'm, I mean, Chili Peppers, Sublime. That type of stuff. I love country music. I love, you know, Morgan Wallen's been great. I like, I love Eric Church, but I mean, Luke Bryan's amazing. Uh, big Jack Johnson fan. Will always be. And, uh, you know, my brother, he was a parrot head. Uh, he and my uncle were. So, you know, unfortunately, with, with Jimmy passing away, the fortunate thing is it's everywhere now, right? Everyone's playing a lot of Jimmy Buffett music. So I'm always happy with that. Um, you know, to be honest with you, it's like the most concerts I've ever been to in my life are the Doobie Brothers. And I love the Doobie Brothers, so that I, I love that part. Well, I listen to Blake Shelton sometimes secretly. Yeah. I don't know if that's something I need to be uh, embarrassed about, but no, you should never be. Okay. People are that successful. Why? Why should people be embarrassed about it? You know, they're at like the top, the highest of highs. You're like, it's like people being a fan of me. It's like, well, that that kind of sucks. But I mean, I, I I did at least get up to the top, so we're good. Yeah, this is the Kevin Franson <laughs> fan club right now, corner of the dugout. There it is. <laughs> Woohoo! We finally meet. Yeah. Finally meet. Well, where do you live? Because uh, do you stay year-round in uh, Washington area, or do you go back to the Bay Area? Because you're from Los Gatos right. and San Jose area. Well, so on, on all those sheets, Los Gatos will be where I was born. Never never spent a day of my life <laughs> living there. Uh, every day of my life in Willow Glen. Um, until we moved out uh, to South Jersey when I got the, the Phillies gig. So we still live there. We still live in South Jersey. You know, mom, mom is out in uh, San Jose still. My in-laws are in San Jose. Everybody's still out in San Jose. But... Um, yeah, that's home. That will always be home. Well, yeah, Bay Area forever. Yep. And I was at the game the other day uh, for Mike Murphy's mm -hmm. uh, Wall of Fame ceremony. So I was curious, do you have any stories? Or I know he's got the famous line, right? I was here before you. I'll be here long after you're gone. Yeah, uh, well, hello. Uh, that was Murph. I mean, so Papa Smurf is the greatest baseball individual I've ever been around. Most selfless, most consistent, lovable. He'd always call me Franny Farkle. I called the Papa Smurf, Candy Cane. You know, you hear all the guys' name, nicknames, and uh, man, <laughs> Petey Pablo is a you know for uh, Pedro Feliz. But we can go. You go on and on about you know Murph, and and all you could think about is why is it, Murph? You're the best. I'm a piece of. And he would just tell you like, like Murph. No, you are the best. Like you are seriously the best. And I sent him a message, a video message about it, and uh, said, you can officially be known as the best now. You're on the wall of fame. Um, someone who I every time we're in San Francisco, I go and visit. Yeah, he, he gets me going. He gets me. He gets me emotional just for the fact that he treated me like I was a. Uh, a big time player because that's who he treated how he treated every player and that's the part where 
it's just it's Papa Smurf. Papa Smurf, he took care. I mean, he's the best. It's it's like, it's hard to get into good stories because I mean, for me personally, there's so many, but it's like I just let everyone tell them. Yeah, I got mine. Yeah. <laughs> Since you are a Bay Area guy, I got to play for the hometown team. Do any stories come to mind? Like, who did you kind of look up to as fan favorites, and do you remember meeting them because you were in the organization? Well, playing with Bonds was like, you know, the coolest thing. I mean. It all started here in 07, too, because uh, I've been struggling for so long. We just got back from from the uh, the Nats series, which he broke the, the record. Mm. And it was a uh, – we were flying here for a doubleheader, then to Atlanta. So it was just like a makeup doubleheader here. In between games one and two, he'd listen – he'd watch me, like, just struggle with, you know, the hitting coaches at the time, just tr tell me anything and everything. None of it made sense. And I was coachable, so I'm going to do everything. And he finally just – unloaded on me and said get in the you know cage in between games he started throwing bp to me started working with me um uh, i had four starts after that that every day that we'd go in the cage for like an hour and he'd throw batting practice to me for 45 minutes to an hour working on things and i ended up hitting like three homers on that trip and then from august 15th on i hit 370 and he, he would always be like oh no nah, no nah, i was not no i never did that i was like yeah you did you know that but that was the part, and uh, you know, meeting someone that gets a rap, and it's like it's just how always taught: treat somebody how they treat you. So you react to how they treat you. Everyone has these these stories like, oh, he was not. This was like he was great. He's a fantastic individual to me, uh, to my family, and I always got that for me too. J.T. Snow. I mean, meeting him uh, 05, my first spring training, just in. It's gonna be my first spring training in general, and I'm in the big league camp, and I'm out there with him, and I'm like, Man, that's JT Snow. But, I mean, I'm dropping f bombs because I'm like, it's JT effing Snow. And uh, the one thing that he passed along to me, that I have always passed along to anybody that's you know get, getting their chance, getting their opportunity, is you know be content, never be satisfied. And it's it's such a great way to look at things because be content where you are, but never be satisfied because you always got to want more. And uh, still. That lives, that lives on longer than anything I feel like in this game that ever taught me. So That's some good. You're taking me down memory lane there. I just need someone like Barry to help me with uh, tips on the golf course, get the ball in the air. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll let you know how to do that. <laughs> well, Kevin, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming on, nice. and uh, this Appreciate was a lot of fun. It. No problem. Thanks for having me.